Hi, my name is Tiffany and this presentation was created to provide a brief tutorial on how to apply backward elimination when conducting multiple linear regression. In the introduction to the chapter on multiple regression, the authors mention several different types of multiple regression, including simultaneous, hierarchical, stepwise, forward, and backward. The type that I will be focusing on in this presentation is backward multiple regression. Our authors provide um, this definition of backward multiple regression. And they state, with backward regression, all the variables are added into the model, then are eliminated one by one, with the variable that has the largest probability of f, or the p-value, removed until all variables have a p-value equal to or less than 0.1. There are two asso uh, assumptions associated with multiple regression, and they are that the relationship between each of the predictor variables and the dependent variable is linear and the error or the residual is normally distributed and uncorrelated with the predictors. The research question we want to answer in this particular tutorial is, what is the most parsimonious combination of parents' education, competence, pleasure, mosaic, and math achievement in, pro in predicting scholastic aptitude test? Given this question, we know that the scholastic aptitude test is the dependent variable, and the remaining variables are the independent variables. Essentially, what we want to know is which of the fewest of these independent variables can reasonably predict the dependent variable. The steps that we need to take in answering this research question involves first checking the data we have meets the assumptions of multiple linear regression, and once the assumptions are met, we can proceed to to conduct analysis of our data and interpret our SPSS outputs. And finally, we present our results in APA format. Before beginning to generate results for analysis, we need to check for fulfillment, for fulfillment of the assumptions of multiple regression, beginning with the first assumption that each of the predictor variables and the dependent variable is linear. So to do this, we go to our HSB data file in SPSS. In the menu, and we, in the menu bar, we select graphs, legacy dialogs, and then we select scatter dot. The scatter dot dialog box appears, and we select the matrix scatter option, then we select define to proceed. The scatter plot matrix dialog box appears. We then move all of the independent and dependent variables from our selection menu on the left hand panel into the matrix variables box. Here I moved parents education, competence scale, pleasure scale, the mosaic pattern test, math achievement and scholastic aptitude test into the matrix box. Then we click on the options button and then the options dialog box appears. We select exclude cases list wise, then we click on continue. We come back to our scatter plot matrix box and we click on OK to exit this box. You will notice a scatter plot matrix is now generated in your outputs file. Let's take a closer look at the very last row of this matrix. Here we can see that all five of our independent variables as shown on the x-axis and our dependent variable shown on the y-axis is included. Given that the first assumption requires us to ensure the relationship between each of the predictor variables and the dependent variables linear, we have to take a closer look at each of the boxes. To help us with this process, I added a regression line to the scatter plot matrix to help us determine linearity. A quick visual inspection of each of these boxes appears to reveal that a straight line as opposed to a curved line fits the points between the dependent variable and the independent variables nicely. Now that we have determined the first assumption is fulfilled, we need to ensure that the second assumption is also fulfilled. The second assumption requires us to ensure that the error, or residual, is normally distributed and uncorrelated with the predictors. So to do this, let's go back to our HSB data file. In the menu bar, click on Analyze, Regression, and Linear. The Linear Regression dialog box appears. Now we define our dependent and independent variables using the fields provided. Here I moved scholastic aptitude test into the dependent box. I then moved all five of the independent variables into the independent box. 
Now, because I am not actually going to run regression results at this moment, I am going to ignore the settings and method for now. What I am interested in is creating plots to check for our second assumption. I, so I click on plots. The linear regression block plots dialog box appears. And because I am interested in the relationship between the predictor variables and the residual, I assigned Z residual to the Y axis and Z predictor to the X axis. I click continue and I am back at the linear regression dialog box. I select OK to exit from this box. You will now notice that your output files include a few tables, including variables entered or removed, model summary, ANOVA, coefficients, and residual statistics. But what we are interested in most is the scatter plot, which is shown here on the screen. So to help us better interpret the residual plot, we can add a reference line at zero. To do this, we go back to the outputs for the scatter plot and double click on it. Once we double click on our plot, the chart editor appears. We click on options, then we select Y axis reference line. The properties dialog box appears and we type zero in the position field. Then we select apply, select apply and, we and we close out from this box. So looking at the scatter plot, we want to know whether assumption two is fulfilled. A visual inspection of the scatter plot shows that the dots are scattered throughout, which means the errors are normally distributed. This meets the second assumption. Now, if the dots created a pattern of some sort, then this would indicate that the residuals are not normally distributed, meaning the assumption is not fulfilled. But in our case, the second assumption is fulfilled. Now, we are ready to conduct our analysis and interpret the results to answer our research questions. So we continue working within our HSB data file. So we go back to the data file, and in the menu bar, we click on Analyze, Regression, then Linear. The regression or the linear regression dialog box opens. The dependent variable and independent variables should already be in the assigned boxes from when we placed them there earlier. But if not, move the variables to the appropriate fields. What we want to pay attention to this time is the method field. Click on the drop down menu and select backward. We also want to generate some specific statistics in our outputs, so we click on statistics. The linear regression statistics dialog box opens. We want to make sure that estimates, model fit, our squared change, descriptives, and collinearity diagnostics are selected. Then we click on continue to proceed. We return to the linear regression dialog box and we select OK to exit. Now, SPSS generates a series of outputs described in this slide and the next few slides. The descriptive statistics table shows us that this analysis was based on data from 73 cases. If we look back at the HSB data file, we see that there are 75 rows or cases. But because SPSS only conducts analyses on complete cases, we know that there are only 73 cases with complete data. Uh, the correlations matrix provides basic information about the statistical significance of the correlation between the predictor variable, variables and the dependent variable. Because the statistical significance shown here is for a one-tailed test of significance, we can do a quick calculation to see what these results would be for a two-tailed test. By multiplying each of the one-tailed significance values by 2, we see that the only predictor variable with a p-value less than 0 0.05 is math achievement. So this means that the math achievement predictor variable is correlated with the scholastic aptitude test independent variable. Another one of our output tables is the variables entered and removed. This table is especially important because it tells us which and how many predictor variables were removed from the model. Keep in mind that model creation with backwards multiple regression begins with all the predictor variables, then eliminations of variables with the largest p-value indicating no statistical significance occur one by one until all the remaining variables in the model have a p-value that is equal to or less than 0 0.01. 
The variables entered, removed table shows us that at the start in model one, all five of the predictor variables were included in the model. Then, based on a large p-value, the competence scale variable was removed from the model in model two, leaving the remaining four predictor variables in the model. Once again, the mosaic pattern test uh, showed a large p-value, so it was also removed from the model in model three. The predictor variables remaining in model three include just three variables, uh, which are math achievement test, pleasure scale, and parents' education. The model summary table provides us additional information about each of the three models that were run. The adjusted R-squared column for each of the three models indicates the percentage of variance in the dependent variable that can be attributed to the predictor variables. Here we see that model two and three explain the most vari variance in the dependent variable at 64.6% and 64.4% respectively. Even though model two explains a slightly more variance in the dependent variable, it is not so much more than that explained by model three. And because we are looking for a model with the fewest predictor variables that also explain most of the variance in the dependent variable, we can see that selecting model three is the logical choice. The ANOVA table shows that all three models are statistically significant because their p-values are less than 0 0.001. The coefficients table gives us even more information to inform our interpretation. Since we selected model three as the most favorable option, let's take a closer look at the variables in this model. The coefficients table reveals that of the three predictor variables in model three, only math achievement with a p-value of 0 0.000 and pleasure scale with a p-value of 0 0.052 statistically and significantly contribute to the model. Lastly, using the coefficients table, we can check these predictor value variables for issues of multicollinearity using the tolerance values. Uh, we know that the tolerance value must not be less than 1 minus r square or 0 0.341. And as shown in the coefficients table, all of these variables have a tolerance value that is more than 0 0.341, meaning that there, we do not have any issues with multicollinearity. Shown on the screen are additional tables generated from our SPSS output, but we don't necessarily need to go and interpret the information shown here from these tables because we've already interpreted uh, sufficient information from the previous tables. So here is our write-up in APA about our findings. Please note that in this description, we explicitly state our method of analysis, which in our case is backward multiple regression, and the variables that we used. We also noted any assumptions that we met, and we include tables with supporting information. And then of course, our major findings and our effect size. Shown on the screen is the table that was mentioned in our write-up. This is table one, showing the means, standard deviations, and, and correlations for the variables. This table, table two, provides a summary of backward multiple regression for all the models. And this table was also referenced in our APA write-up of our results. This concludes my presentation on the application of backward multiple linear regression. Thank you so much for watching.